Hello guys, today on Rising Farmers is the success story of Frank. Frank came all the way from Ghana to Israel to learn about Israel's agricultural sector. My name is Frank Lonlonyo Eliklim Asemenyura. I come from Ghana in the Volta region and I speak uh, the language Ewe, English language and then Chui. Um, I'm a husband of a, a young beautiful wife and then uh, I have a young daughter. Um, I'm currently in Israel in the Kibbutz Yad Mordechai where I have been sent by the institution that I schooled with to do some work so that I can be able to get some experience when it comes to agriculture. Uh, I am currently in a Yadhail Dairy Farm, Yadhail Dairy Farm, which is located in the Kibbutz Yad Mordechai. Uh, Yadhail Dairy Farm, uh, as the name goes, uh, they are into milk production. So the kind of keeper uh, cows, that is, I mean, very good breed cows that will give very good quality and I mean, and, and quantity of milk that they, they want. Um, I came to this farm in uh, in the last in the last few weeks of uh, of April, where I came to join my colleagues from Thailand, Ghana, and then the people from I mean. Uh, the land of Israel as well and we all work together in harmony as one group of people um, I want to say that I am very happy working I mean in a dairy farm right now because uh, I want to say that the experience is so enormous the experience is something that I, I mean is mind-blowing because uh, you know all my life I've never been to the dairy farm I've never worked with, uh, with animals this is my first time working with animals and, and Though the time uh, is, is a bit short for me, I want to say that I've learned a lot both on the job and then from the people, that is from the workers. I've learned a whole lot of things uh, from them. When it comes to the dairy farm, we have a lot of activities that we, we carry out on a daily basis in order to get the work done. Uh, one of the activities is, um, is the milking. That is, in the, we do the market in the morning, we do it at noon, and we do it in the evening as well. So what happens is that when you, I mean, it's your turn to come and do milking, there are certain things you need to do before you start the milking. You need to set up the milking area, where, I mean, which is called the makon in, a, in, I mean, in Hebrew. You have to fix the filters, you have to connect the tanks where the milk will, I mean, will be channeled to. You have to put the beans where you are going to put the the things that you are going to use to clean the teeth of the cows before you start the milking. After that, maybe one person you have I mean you have to go to bring a group one, then followed by group two, followed by group three. We put all of them in different locations in different areas because we are in the summer now and the weather is very hot. We put them there just to receive some showers before. The milking starts so that is basically some of the things that we do then followed by uh, masiria we call it masiria i mean in hebrew that is uh, insemination uh, some of the cows will be, on, will be on heat so definitely they have to be inseminated with very good quality spams i mean i mean that is collected from other farms or very good breeds i mean in the within the country so a doctor will come a specialist of course will come and do that for us and then after the insemination we have to send the various cows to back to their various groups and stuff and then after that uh, maybe there is i mean i mean there is also some problems maybe pregnancy problems 
So another doctor will have to come and do some other checks on the cow. If everything is okay, then I mean uh, we, we will send them back as well. Then uh, we have something we call pasim, that is cleaning of the the, I mean, of the cow dung. We have to clean all around. It's, I mean, it's not all the time that we do that, but at least we do it. I mean, thrice or four. I mean, four times in a week. That is uh, one of the. Uh, the track, I mean the tractors, we connect a tie, a lorry tie that has been cut, we cut it open, we connect it to it, which I mean, uh, when driving, you are able to collect the cow dunk and then place it at where maybe later on it will be collected in a hole. So that is another activity as well that we do. When it comes to injection of the cows, it's one of the things that is very key. When you are milking and you find out that um, uh, some of the cows are not feeling too good or the milk is not of good quality you first have to check if there is a if there's an indication on the computer that there is a problem with this cow then we have to check which of the teeth or which of the the compartments of the other that the problem is located so when you are able to locate it by checking you use uh, some uh, uh, little tools to just check if you're able to locate the problem, then you are. There. I mean, then you indicate it by using some colors, black, blue, I mean, uh, and then uh, green color. The green color is for the front teeth, and then the black color is for the back teeth. Uh, so, if it requires, if it requires injection, then you try to give injection, and that will be all. Right now I'm in Yad Mordechai, Israel, and I'm standing right in a corn farm. This is sweet corn, as you can see, grown under drip irrigation. This is marvelous. This is amazing. For about four or five months now, there has not been any rain in Israel, but you can see how this corn, sweet corn, is doing so well. Everything is so green. There's uniformity in growth, everything, the development is perfect. This tells you that if we are really serious about agriculture, I think, I think we will do so much money for our various countries. Uh, as you can see, drip irrigation is something that Israel does not joke about at all. They don't play with it. They, they don't have water, so the little water that they have, they try to put it into maximum use. So as you can see, this whole field, this whole field is about 90 acres or 100 acres, as you can see, full of corn at my right hand side. And uh, my left is uh, cotton, all under irrigation. As you can see, the uniformity of growth. You can see the drip lines. Uh, this one you are seeing now uh, is uh, two rows per lateral, as you can see. And it's amazing if you enter the field, my brothers and sisters, if you enter the, this field, it's very amazing. 
So I just want to encourage each and every one of us, the youngsters, we the youth of Africa, or even the whole world, we need to embrace agriculture. Let's try to do something out of agriculture because for me, uh, it is the backbone of every nation. Israel, uh, I would say, is, is, is almost a desert country, but they try to do something out of what they have. Like I said in the first place, they don't have water. Their soil is not the best. The land is not the best. But they try to, you know, put resources together and to make a living out of the soil or the land that they find themselves in. So, like you can see, I mean, this is very amazing and marvelous. I, 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 I kind of like this so much and, and I'm so happy about talking about this now. And I want to believe that in the future, we are also going to try something like this when we get back home. It is very nice. I'm in a cornfield now, and I just want to talk a little bit about the layout and everything. First of all, I would like to talk about the neatness or the cleanliness of the farm. As you can see, you can find no weed. There are no weeds at all. The farm is clean as if maybe we are in a house. But, I mean, believe me or not, this is a cornfield, as you can all see. It's so clean, no weed, so there's no competition between the, the corn and, and weeds at all. As you can see, you can see the thickness of the stem of the, of the corn. You can see the planting distance. Everything is uniform. For the layout of uh, the drip lines, you can see every two rows, there is a, a drip line passing through. So we call it a two rows per lateral. That is what we have here now. And it's able to distribute water to both rows and everything is growing so nicely. So, in fact, I'm even short of words. I don't know what to say again. This is so marvelous, it's so beautiful. You can see, this is corn. It's so clean, no pests, nothing. It's, it's, it's just growing so beautifully, as you, can, as you can see. As you can see, the soil is not, I mean, the best, but Israel is doing something out of it. This looks like a, almost a clay soil, but as you can see, with the drip lines and everything, everything is working perfectly. And I believe we can also be able to do something at you. You know, when we put our heads together, we think about what to do for our nation, we think about what to do for our countries. We can be able to develop as, a, as people, you know. So I encourage all of us to, you know, embrace agriculture. You know, I mean, when you go to some areas, they tell you that it's poor people that engage in agriculture. But I tell you, it's a lie. When you come to Israel like this, the rich people or the most i mean the most rich people that you can find in Israel are all farmers they use big big cars when they come to farm and you ask yourself if these are really farmers but i but what i've seen for myself charlie it's great it's great it's great to be a farmer so we are all looking forward to do something nice one day like this to able able to support mankind so we have a cotton farm just opposite the cornfield and this cotton farm is also grown under drip irrigation and this cotton is just planted mainly to feed the cows the dairy i mean there's a dairy farm in the in the kibbutz yad modikai so this cotton is planted mainly for the cows and as you can see these guys are serious about everything they mean business if they can grow all this just to feed the cows then you can just imagine what they'll do to just uh, you know feed the human being themselves so this is just i mean something later we want to just talk about see it's just cutting because cotton field very vast land just cutting and just to feed the cows the dairy farm in yad Monihai. they have all this just to feed their cows and charlie if somebody tells you that you put in all this effort and nothing comes out of it you have to know that i mean they are they, i mean they are they, they are really into business i want to say a little bit of what the farm has impacted in me in this short while that i've worked i mean that I've, I've, I've been in the farm i want to say that i learned a lot when it comes to animal management 
I learned a lot from the management uh, themselves, that is the people that are managing the farm, the workers and everybody both from the top to the bottom. Uh, what I want to say is that when it comes to animal management, it is not that simple. It's not that simple and easy. But if you are serious about it, if you are smart, if you pay attention, I want to believe that you are going to have a very good day. If you kind of just want to do anything that I mean, any, anything, anything without paying attention, I can tell you that these animals, uh, these animals can give you, I mean, a very hectic day. They can cause chaos in your life. I mean, they can, they can just mesmerize your day. They can run away. You have to chase them and do all sorts of things. And talking about the good years in the life, the people that live in the community, I want to say that they are very, very nice people. They are very cordial. They, I mean. I, I don't know how to even describe them. Anything that you, you want to approach them, they try to explain to you. Although they, I mean, there is language barrier, they try as much as possible to explain them so that you can be able to get them. So we move around with them, we do everything, we go to the supermarket, everything is our house, I mean our neighbors, we, we share everything together. So that is something that I want to say that I'm so grateful about. They are so cordial. There is no, I mean, they don't want any difference between us and them. That maybe we are from Africa or I mean, uh, they are from Israel. There is that kind of cordial relationship. And then uh, my final remarks about the farm is uh, I want to thank the management so much, uh, the Balabai himself. I want to salute him. The man, the man is just too much. He's always on the job. He's always on the run to help, to support us, to get the work. Dance. He doesn't come sit down in the office and then give orders. He comes, jumps, I mean, he jumps on the tractor, he pass here, he do this, he do that, and before he realize they are all done. Then uh, Udi, I say thank you so much. I learned a lot from you. This man, if he tells you that this is going to happen to this animal at this time, know that it's going to happen. You have to pay attention. Then Danny, Danny, in fact, this man is so marvelous. This man is so fantastic, despite his age. This man is always running to make sure that everything is well on the farm. Then uh, we have Anya, we have Avi, we have Toma, we have uh, Salami, my man, we have uh, Gal, then we have the Thailand team, we have Anna, in fact, this lady is so smart, she's also trying a lot. Uh, Didi, Didi is a very strong guy, Charlie. He's doing so well. well. What I like about him so much is if he's bringing the cow, he has a way of whistling. And his whistle, Charlie, it will make you laugh at different styles of whistling. So I want to say to everybody that I've enjoyed the farm. It was a, a nice moment for me to be with you guys, although it was short. Like I said earlier on, I've learned a lot. And I believe that after leaving this farm, I'm going to set up my own farm, even if not with, uh, I mean, if, if not the dairy farm, I'm going to do with, I mean, other animals that is going to help me in the farm. I'm so grateful and I want to say thank you. In my local language, I say, Akwe, Akwe, Kaka, Kaka, Mauna, Yurami, which means that I'm so grateful, thank you, and God bless all of you. I salute you all.